Welcome back. We are here at our jalapeno edition of Math Monday. So, as I just mentioned, today's math will be a jalapeno level of spiciness, and this is a common pepper that you see for sale in almost every grocery store. Jalapenos, on the Scoville heat rating scale, have typical heats ranging from 2,500 all the way up to about 8,000 Scovilles. Remember, 8,000 is a big number, but the theoretical top of the Scoville scale would be 16 million. So while this is definitely getting spicier, it's still a pepper that many people enjoy. And this math, while it is a little bit more challenging, is still math that you can also enjoy. Today's math will feature both addition and division as core skills needed to find the mean. And that's this word you see here, mean, just like an adjective that we would use to describe somebody who's not very nice. But mean in this case means the classic average. This is most of the time the number that people are calculating when you hear the word average. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to find the average distance of rocket flight number one. And in order to do that, in order to calculate the mean, there are two steps. I'm going to add up all of my rocket flights all 10 pieces of data, and then I'm going to divide by the number of data points I have. That is 10 flights. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start by adding up all of my flights. 11, 10, 11, 12, 8, 11, 9, 10, 13, and 14. Now this is a big addition problem. There are many ways I could have done this. I could have added up just three numbers at a time and then added those subtotals together. I could have looked for groups of 10. There are a lot of strategies that could be used. But in this case, I'm just going old school and I'm just doing a big, long addition problem. I'm, of course, going to be adding up the values in my ones place first, carrying any additional values to my tens place, and then adding down to get a grand total. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 0 is still 7, plus 9 gets us to 16, plus 1 gets us to 17. 17 plus 8 is 25, plus 2 more gets us to 27, plus 1 is 28, plus another one is 29. So I'm going to record the 1's place down here, my 9, and I'm going to carry the 2, that was my 10's place, I had two groups of 10, up to the top of my 10's place. Then I'll continue adding, going down. 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7, plus 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9, plus 1 is 10. If only all of my addition problems were so easy. So, I will record my 10 down there. And my grand total now for all of my rocket flights was 109 feet. But I'm not done with mean. Now I need to do the second part of the problem, the division. And we know sometimes division can be tricky. In order to be successful at a division problem, you actually have to do all four operations successfully, usually multiple times, which is what makes classic long division one of the hardest skills to master. So if you're still learning it, if it's a bit shaky, don't feel bad about that. It is truly challenging. So I have 109 total, and I need to divide that by 10, not because it's a convenient number, but because that was the amount of rocket flights I had. So I will set it up like a traditional long division problem. And I'm going to start dividing. How many groups of 10 can I make in one? Well, I can't. So I'll move over and access a second place value. How many groups of 10 can I make in a group of 10? Well, just one. And I make sure that I put my one over that zero because I needed the zero to make a number big enough to pull a group of 10 out of it. Then I multiply. 1 times 10 is 10. My next step is I subtract. The difference between 10 and 10 is 0. And then I check. Is 0 smaller than 10? It is, so I'm probably doing OK. And then finally, my last step, of course, is I bring the 9 down. Then I repeat my process again. 
how many groups of 10 can I make out of 9? Well, I can't make any. Now, this is really important. I have to record that I can't make any. And fortunately, we have a digit that indicates can't make any or nothing. We call it 0. So I have to record a 0 up there. If I don't record the 0, my solution is going to be awry, and I don't want that. Then I multiply again. 0 groups of 10 is 0. I subtract. My difference is 9. I check. 9 is still smaller than, but smaller than 10. Not by much, but it's smaller. And at this point, you'll see I have nothing to bring down over here. I'll put an x. That's how I know I'm finished, when I have nothing to bring down. So my quotient up here is 10, that in 109 divided by 10, I can make 10 entire groups. I'll rewrite that 10 here. And then I have 9 pieces left over of 10 that I would have needed for an additional group or an 11th group. But I didn't quite get there. So this is how we get the fraction 9 tenths. So the average distance that rocket number one flew was 10 and 9 tenths feet per flight. You could also write this as a decimal, 10 and 9 tenths, if you prefer decimals. Naturally, you should now go through and you should calculate the mean or the average for rocket flight number two. You can see in my data, these numbers tend to be a little bit bigger, so I would expect the average, of course, to be higher. And like all other math skills and all other skills in life, you're not going to learn it just by doing it once. You're going to have to do this maybe dozens of times for this to be solid. And while not everyone thinks that that's all that much fun, it is what will be necessary in order to truly master these skills. So until next week, continue working with your rocket data, and I hope you have a good week. Bye now.